Welcome to this evening's Sunset Safari. Uh, we are here at the Buffalo Hook Waterhole. My name is Brent, and I have... We have this hippo who's fighting off the beckoning drought. As you can see, the water is disappearing around him. And this is the second time this year we're going to watch Buffalo's Hook waterhole dry up. That late rain gave it a last sort of gasp. And as you can see, there's no fish in it at the moment, but there will be some insects. And those insects being around will keep a few species uh, close to the water or even in the water. Now, um, the hippo being one of them, trying to hide from the harsh African sun. of South Africa and we notice as we come out across the mud there's lots of what look to be animal footprints and indeed they are but they are not made by a mammal let me get Dave to zoom in yeah lots of footprints and the big ones the majority of them are made by the two Egyptian geese that are on the other bank of the dam there they are pair of Egyptian geese. Of course, those are not the only residents at the Buffalo's Hook waterhole at the moment. There's another pair of little three-banded plovers, gorgeous little birds, also associated with water. You see them there, Dave? The little guys. And of course, as this waterhole dries, all of these will have to move to another waterhole. And the most interesting might even find them when this really gets dry moving is the hinged terrapins. So there we go. So as soon as this dries, the closest water to here is to the north. But they might even make the long walk to the Juma Pan and go join all their Terrapin brethren there. Now we're going to go see if we can find those in Kahuma lion cubs. Hopefully mom's around. But if not, uh, we'll Good afternoon everybody and welcome to this end of the sunset safari. Now I know that you've spent all morning with these cubs, but I was so jealous that I thought I'd come into this area and see if we could find them again. Jandre, of course, he's on camera today. He's very depressed that he has to spend another three hours with these leopard cubs. But, uh, Jandre, do you think you'll cope? No. He doesn't think you'll cope. We don't care, of course. Um, we're going to try and spend as long as we can with these little cubs and see if Mum doesn't come back to f who's gone off hunting. She's left them here now for close on two days. Now that's not unusual when they get to this age and they'll start to make very small kills for themselves and in fact I think they were seen chasing Franklins earlier today. So they are sort of their cattish instincts are starting to kick in. Now the leopard you're looking at now as far as I can tell is the female whose name is Shongile now, not Charlotte anymore. You can, of course, call her Charlotte Shongile if you want to. Sticker, there's one bird I can't identify, and there, um, Jandri, if you look up, the, the battises have just come in to start shouting at them. I don't know if you can see in the bush, just above and to the right, you might be unsighted by the scraggly tree in front. You've got them there. Yeah, so those are the chin spot battises, and they're going tip, 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 tip. And is hunting over there. Now we're as live as Brent is, so please ask us questions. Hashtag Safari Live questions at wildearth.tv if you'd like to ask us anything about what we're seeing here today. That is not Charlotte. Shongile, sorry. Oh, is it? Yes, it is. It is. Anyway, they're very sweet little cubbies here, and I think we're going to spend as long as we can, uh, even if they are relatively flat cat, as they say, because we don't know we're in the south, and that will be that for the next little while. And Lisa, I agree with you. You say you can't believe how big they're getting. They are getting quite big. They're about the size now 
as I look there, of a, well, um, what kind of dog breed would you say, Jandre? Sort of, um, they're much larger than a poodle. Um, and indeed they would swallow that lamentable breed, the Pekingese, with great ease. <laughs> and you can just see them looking up at the, looking up at the birds, thinking, go away and shut up. available to them in case some other predator comes knocking along here. Look, that's too sweet. <laughs> Isn't that great? Staring up at the birds thinking, how oh my... The alarm calling from those birds is not that vos vociferous. It can be a lot more strident when they see an adult. And I found her in the tree yesterday morning because there was a squirrel giving a half-hearted sort of <coughs> call. And she was lying up there in the top of a um, in the top of a weeping boar bean tree and the squirrel actually underneath her but giving a very sort of half-hearted call. <laughs> oh, just perfect. Perfect little cat. I won't be so little for very long. I'm just sort of waking up. I just, they've been sleeping for here for most of the day. You can see yawning quite heavily, and you can see, I don't know if any, how many of you were on drive with us this morning. But you could see definitely the size of the teeth on those tiny, tiny little lion cubs. That compared with the six-month-old or five-and-a-half-month-old teeth on this leopard, well, there's really no comparison. They've already started to get their adult teeth as far as I'm aware. Born on the 2nd of February this year. Thinking about getting up, always the ears go back first. Oh, big stretch. The house cat, totally instinctual, looking quite skinny. That's... I think I'm talking nonsense. Aaron in Florida, you want to know when the absolute earliest time is that these cubs will be left to fend for themselves. Um, with the earliest on record in this area pendant in the next sort of three months or so, it's not impossible though. Uh, the male won't, definitely not. The female, well, eight months, that was a female. The males tend to be a bit like human beings. Uh, they like to stay home with the comforts of mothers cooking and uh, someone else making their beds for them until they're a little bit older. But eight months, two days at a time, regularly since they were born, because their mother must kill. She must kill to feed them. We'll just sit here for a little bit and then we might move a little closer to the drainage and see if we can't get view of the other one as well. You can see how beautifully hidden they are. Yesterday, I know that and yesterday they were about sort of 50 meters from each other. Hello Cindy in Tennessee. You want to know the spot patterns of these two leopards? Well, the male is 3-3 three, three, and the female is 4-3. And I'm just a little bit suspicious that this isn't actually the male. I couldn't see the spot pattern exactly on his left, on his right, our left-hand side. But the eyes looked very Georgish, at least slightly over that way. And see if you can't get a slightly better picture. So three, three, and four, three. The mother is three, four. So that's three spots on her right and four on her left. 
their father, if he is Tingana, and I think he probably is. How's that, Jandri? Any good? Their father is 5'5". Five five. You see him there? Forward, back. Is that fine? And, oh dear. <laughs> there we go. Rondre Sub, no, that is, the, that is her. Can you see that single spot on the top there? That indicates that it's her. Well, she's really hiding that part of her face if it is her. I think it is. There we go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the female. Where the male's gone, he may have gone off to climb a tree, he may have gone off to find some more shade. Xranger, you want to know if there's a penance any time that I call these leopards George and Charlotte. Now, for those of you who don't, perhaps don't know, those are the names I gave them before they were given their official names uh, yesterday. And um, I'm... I'm struggling to come to terms with the new Lance x rang every time I call them George and Charlotte. Um, no, no there isn't. No. Thankfully not, because it's going to be difficult. I said last night that we should probably give them two names. You know, it could be George Hosanna and um, Charlotte Shongile, and I thought that was quite a good idea. Uh, Brentlier Smith's brain exploded in his head when I suggested that to him. Um, and when I suggested calling Karula Elizabeth, um, he, um, well, he, uh, he dropped dead. We had to bury him outside the camp. Anyway, that's the story there. I just, what I wanted to get a view of what I think is the male. It's suddenly got quite a lot warmer out of the wind here, hasn't it, Jandri? It's supposed to be about 22 degrees Celsius. It's about 74 Fahrenheit, if I'm not completely wrong. 71 Fahrenheit, sorry. 72? No, I've got it wrong. 72. Thank you, Kirsten. I need to get shirty. How's oh, this camera is just perfect for this, of course. Yet again, the right side of his her face is hidden. Can you see it? No. So you can see the three spots there. And Brent Leo Smith has got some very, very fine news for you. So go across and see from him. So we're not going to stay very long, but just look at that. So there we go. Can barely crawl. Now, as the day has gone on, the sun has changed. Oh, look at growling at its sibling. The sun has moved. So they're going to crawl deeper into the shade. It's going to get hot there. These guys are tiny. So the eyes only you go, trying to snuggle up, get out of the sun. It's not unusual for mom to leave them alone for a couple of days. Normally at this age, not more than two days. And I think she was here yesterday. When, when James checked this morning, she wasn't. And now I've checked. One vehicle comes to check every afternoon. So let's look at that. Isn't that just the cutest thing you've ever seen? Oh, they are gorgeous. Right, let's leave the little cuteness. We don't, as I said, we don't want to bring any undue attention. Really, really precarious time for a lion cub. Uh, a passing mongoose could even manhandle them. So we're going to go back to James and the leopard cubs and we're going to leave the little Nkoumas uh, to wait for their mom to return. Right, well, we've spotted the other one, but not for you just yet, everyone. He's just the other side. 
And so we'll just wait for him to come back. He's help Jandre to get them both in shot for you. If I was on camera, all you'd have is a blurry kind of rendition of brown bush. You know, I can just see him with the binoculars. I can see his spots the other side of the termite mound. As they get a little bit more active and then go to sleep again. I'm fascinated to know where their mother is. They're pretty good at getting out of the way of predators, and they don't suckle anymore, so she can't actually help them unless she kills something. So I suspect she will stay away from them for as long as it takes for her to kill. If she's in the vicinity hunting, well then she might pop past, but otherwise I think she's going to stay away. And at the moment, don't look like she's coming close. Sandra, you want to know how long it is between at 18 months to two years. She'll come into Easter's probably a few months after that. Let's say, um, perish the thought that George, um, oh, sorry, Hosanna met the uh, meets <laughs> the man. That really wasn't intentional. Let's say the male meets, uh, meets his end rather early and the female goes independent at eight months. She'll come into Easter's sort of three months after that. So it really does depend when they kind of leave home. Um, as to when she will come into Eastress again. I'm going to sneak slightly forward, John Reed, and I'll just get you a picture of the other one. Between the two there, between the two termite mound peaks, straight through there. And you see what I mean? So that those two peaks on the termite mound, you see that little saddle? Yes. Straight through the, t the saddle. Oh. You, you got him. Are we moving? We are. <laughs> Fox hat, while we move stealthily forward, you say, George and Charlotte. You should buy me an apple juice. <laughs> you don't drink apple juice, Andre. You only drink grape juice. Right, grape juice then. Um, Fox hat, I disagree with you. I think it would be a very poor drinking game, largely because, well, I think I'd be ill if I drank that much apple juice. And I don't think I'm going, it's going to take me a long time to get used to Hosanna and Shongile versus Whittle, George, and Charlotte. <laughs> I better turn up the game drive radio. I think there's some people getting mobile now. Look at that. What an afternoon, and just so quiet, very peacefully. And <laughs> we'll go back one meter to the other one. <laughs> we might leave them just now, everybody, but I'm quite happy to just spend a bit longer here. Say when. You're getting old. She's still there. Stations, these two young leopards are still on site. Um, the southern side of the drainage line, visible from the road, mm, probably one out of five. Slightly forward. And you can see them starting to clean them each, themselves fastidiously, like all cats do. And we get asked a lot about can predators or can their prey smell them when they're hunting. Are they able to kind of sneak through the bush and do they use the wind? I think one of the major reasons that cats clean themselves as, f themselves as fastidiously as they do is to try and avoid their prey smelling them when they're on the hunt. And it is my postulation that the wind quite possibly doesn't play much of a role when they're hunting. but I'm not sure if that is true. <laughs> a 
Lisa, you <laughs> you say you wonder if all these cubs have got puppy breath. John Red, do you know what puppy breath is? It smells like you. It smells like me, does it? Okay. I'm really sure what you mean, but I imagine they probably do uh, until they started eating meat. Now their breath will be fairly rancid, I imagine. Um, bits and pieces of uh, rotting flesh in between their little carnassial teeth. So they probably did when they were suckling. Um, but now that they're not suckling and they are purely carnivorous, I suspect that their puppy breath has disappeared. <laughs> minutes or so and then we'll press on and see what else we can find and maybe we'll come across their mum and then we'll come back here a little bit later you see I don't know if you can hear but the the birds have now stopped alarm calling at them no more are the cysticulars in a panic they've left the battises have left little wax bills have left Pose them no threat whatsoever. <laughs> Just wonderful. And thank you very much, all of you, for your screenshots of these cubs. Wonderful that you can take better photographs than I can from where you're sitting. Despite the fact that I'm so close to them, I'm still unable to take a decent photograph today. Far away from us, and at the, right at the end of this very long lens. Hello, Desiree in India, Indiana, sorry, not India. Kirsten, how do you manage that? Um, you, <laughs> you want to know the spelling of the cubs' names? The spelling of um, the male's name is G-E-O-R, G-E, -E, and the spelling of the female's name is C-H-A-R-L-O-T-T-E. -T -T -E. You should spell the female's name X-A-R. L-O-T-T-E, which of course would give it a kind of Shangan flavor, Shalot. Um, I am of course being utterly facetious. The names are spelled, <laughs> Shongile is spelled X-O-N-G-I-L-E, and the male, uh, or the male's name, small chief, or small king, or prince, is H-O-S-A-N-A. -A. All right, let's go across to Brent and find out what he has to show you, some antelope and some equids. We decided to manoeuvre itself, and here we go. Let's just go back. So we've got some a group of male impala, and what looks to be a lone male zebra. Now it's not uncommon for these young stallions behind us. Of course he is. Now safety in numbers. Oh, not the most relaxed young zebra that one. Let's see if he's a bit more relaxed, or he's got lots of impala friends around. There he is. So these young stallions will often buddy up with a group of them back the other way now, mister. Trying to stick with certain of the Impala friends. Shame, he's not the most relaxed zebra, so we're not going to stress him out too much. But now he's panicked, so now he sees it pays to be cautious. Now everyone's on high alert, thanks to <laughs> that young male zebra. Now we're going to continue on. We're on the northern, the last one that was active. We're going to go see if there's any sign of activity there. I've checked uh, the Vubu Road. I've checked the Aubrey's Road then. So Gallagher is the last one to check. It's not impossible. There is another den I know about, but it's right in the center of those little uh, river systems and really over there. I've got a feeling they're a bit further to the west. Uh, we might have a quick squirt around that area as well. Hi, Ashley, who's in England. I'm saying everything in nature has its, has its time and place, including drought. Now, we as humans seem to think this is a very big, sort of huge catastrophe. 
but Africa and the rest of the world has seen numerous droughts far worse than this in its history. Now, your herbivores, so your grass and leaf eaters, uh, are going to have a bit of a tough time of it. But to the left generally hold the strongest genetic code possible. So the most immune to disease, the most uh, hardy, the most resilient, and that is always good to start the next breeding stock. A really good example of this is buffalo. The last major drought like this was in 92, 93 in the Kruger. And the Kruger went from uh, around 30,000 buffalo to around 10,000 buffalo. And that really strong genetic stock of 10,000 buffalo, had, uh, the overall, the meta population will be better off after it. So it is, it is quite a sad thing to see animals struggling, but it isn't always the worst thing. But we can discuss a bit more about the drought. Let's go back to James. And Everybody, Jandre says he desperately wants screenshots of this. This is a very, very cute shot indeed. Very sweet with the little paws on top of the termite mound there. The other one, I can just see a couple of spots breathing heavily, fastest. That is very, very sweet. I, of course, am not allowed to move now. Because if I do, because we're at the right at the end of the lens. Oh, this is interesting. I thought maybe she was hearing the chuffing sound of Karula. And when Karula comes into the area, she'll go choo, 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 to call them. Endlessly entertained is this leopard cub by a ring, light changing, leaves rustling in the wind, termite mound to scratch yourself on, a bit of housekeeping. Checking that her brother isn't walking off somewhere, getting himself into trouble. And um, Kirsten is sort of... And I've just been looking at the spot patterns. But the eyes are definitely those of the males. But watch as he lifts his tail. Oh, I missed it. I thought I could identify them so easily and now it appears that I might be wrong. I might have to beat myself to death. Now oh, Kirsten says she isn't sure it's the male. Kirsten, you best not be wrong. It's, I need to see the other one. The other one definitely seems to have brown eyes, so quite possibly this is the male. Oh, sitting up. You see that, Jandre? I'm about to get you a world-winning photograph. There you are. Say thank you. Yeah, further, further? Yeah, Why? You've still got a stick chopping your head off. Thank you to all of you for taking Jean-Dre his screenshots. He's very pleased, aren't you, Jean-Dre? Quite so. Most grateful. I'm also going to be an epic shot. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, I got her bottom. Or oh, his bottom, whichever it is. Did you see something under the tail there? He's stalking something. It's the eyes. It is the eyes, rather, isn't it? Yeah. Pattern slightly wrong as well. He might also be 4 3. Look at him, tensing. Oh, he's tensing because his sister has got up. He's stalking her. There she comes. You see her there, Jean-Dri? There we are. Yeah. Well, maybe 
And lying down behind the termite mound. I'm trying to think if we'll get a better view. Let me go back a little. Rocky Knight, nice one from you about naming. And I mean, of course, this is a debate you'll have for years to come. Right? It's um, simply. Jean-Ri, I can't see whether you've got a shot or not. <laughs> you got one. Rocky Knight, the reason is that we, we, we see the leopards, we do give the lions, uh, territories are much larger, and so we don't quite have the same relationship with them that we do with the leopards. The leopards are also solitary, which means they're slightly easier to identify. Their markings are much more distinct than lion's markings, for example. And that's basically why. But I mean, the new leopard, the lion cubs I've named um, Jerry, Louise, and Kirsty, uh, because I think there's one male and two two females. That's the, the larger and kahuma what they are. But we will probably not name them. Well, that's definitely the female. She's three. I've got the spot patterns completely wrong. Hang on a second. There's an alarm calling bird. Maybe mum's coming back. Every time I hear a really strident alarm call, I think maybe mum is returning. And once adults, once lions, of course, become adults, then it becomes very difficult to identify individuals. You can do it from the individual whisker spots, but then you need a real proper picture of them. Xranger, a nice question from you. You say, is it part of... Is it part of having, um, or is it one of the advantages of having more than one youngster that they're then able to sort of practice on each other and practice stalking? Yes, I imagine it probably is. These guys definitely don't do it as much as lions. They do it a bit, but yeah, I'm sure it is. But that's not to say that a single, a sick, a single leopard isn't just as. Um, yeah, that's not to say that a single leopard isn't slightly. Uh, Sorry about that, everyone. Um, it's not to say that a sink spent quite a lot of time playing with their mothers and stalking their mothers. Now, I've got this really ass about face here. That She looks 3-3 three, three to me. He is now disappearing through the bushes. I can hear way, way, way in the distance. I can hear a kudu alarm calling. Yeah, there's something calling there. Jack, you want to know why their muscles twitch? Jack, it's because they don't have hands to slap the flies off them. It's simply so that they can shake their, shake the skin and get the flies and other parasites off them. That's the only reason. <laughs> They've just looked up, Rondre, at my kudu call. Yeah, still the kudu are calling in the distance. Sounds like in the Malwati drainage line. So maybe, no, 
maybe Karula is on her way back. I'm very distressed by my lack of remembering what spot patterns of what. Hello, Fluff the Rosy Kitty. Uh, you're obviously a new viewer, and you say, is this a cheetah? Fluff, this is no cheetah. This is a leopard. This is the prince of cats, the ultimate spotted cat. Um, and it is the African leopard. I mean, they are very, very sort of uh, ubiquitous around the world, actually. They extend all the way into Asia. But this is the African leopard, and they differ from cheetahs in many different, in many ways. And if you saw a cheetah next to a leopard, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't confuse them for a second. Uh, the cheetah, the most obvious sign from what we've seen here will, of a cheetah would be those very clear black tear marks going down the side of the face. And then on the body, of course, these little leopards have got what we call rosette, where a cheetah is just sort of the uniform yellow with plain spots, just like the spots that are on the leopard's head. So that's what a cheetah looks like. Cubs also of cheetahs look a little bit like, there comes the other one. Cheetah cubs, there we go, playing with each other a little bit. Cheetah cubs have got a white mantle, so a big white a sort of flash of leopard cubs. You even got a shot there, Jandre. Yes, it's all right. But f Fluff, nice to have you with us, and I hope that you stay with us for a long time. What we're doing here is just waiting to see if the mother doesn't arrive back again and take them off to a kill. Because she's away hunting, and I suspect quite strongly that she's going to come over sometime this afternoon. Alice, what a great question. jean I'm going to go back slightly, see if you don't get a better shot. Why don't you leave the camera on them and then we can see. <laughs> there we go. Alice, you're in Ohio and you say, why do we name the leopards if they don't care? Uh, well, Alice, you're absolutely right. They couldn't give a flying continental, whether we call them George, Hosanna, um, um, Be uh, Beeblebrox, like uh, George Adams might have called them, or Douglas Adams, sorry. Uh, they really couldn't care less. We name them, I suspect, because we like to anthropomorphize. We like to give them human characteristics, and it helps us to identify them. I think that's the emotional reason behind naming them. And... You know, we spend so much time with them that we develop this kind of relationship with these cats and calling them. Um, well, it just wouldn't be very personal at all. So that's why there's no other reason other than the human need to uh, have some kind of emotional connection with them. Bernie, make your way. Um, yeah, I've got a two out of five visual at the moment. Drive channel, and I'm just helping a few others come into the sighting. While they are lying behind that termite mound very unkindly, let's head across to Brent and see where he is. Alas, I've checked the Gallagher shortcut hyena den. Doesn't look like it's been active for a while. So since I've been back, I've, I've been so busy. I'm heading up to the western corner of Juma and around these quarry thickets uh, is a little river system that sometimes Shadow likes to utilize uh, and also Mr. Tingana. So definitely worth a little squiz. I feel like I've been neglecting the western areas. So we'll come have a look around here. I wonder, I haven't seen the side striped jackal since I've been back either. Now, and this morning we found some incredible serval tracks, and Roger was wondering, did we find it? Unfortunately, not Roger. It walked into some very hard ground and we lost the tracks.
but we know it's in that area, so definitely a spot worth checking after dark with the spotlight.